Money don't jiggle jiggle, it folds. I like to see you wiggle wiggle for sure. It makes me wanna dribble dribble, you know. Riding in my fear, you really have to see it. Six feet two in a compact, no slack. But luckily the seats go back. I got a knack to relax in my mind. I'm sipping some red red wine. I crop this and add a ruffle to the bottom so for starters I'm deciding what length I want it probably about here and then okay and then I'm gonna add about an inch because I always accidentally cut too short and that'll be my seam allowance marking it with a pin now I just took it off I folded it in half and I'm just gonna cut along where I put this pin all right now we're just trying it on it's already looking more like something I would wear um I really like the length so now we need to make a ruffle which I actually haven't done before so I'm hoping it's just going to be so easy. Okay, I googled how to do it, but I got so bored. So I'm just going to wing it. So I'm going to cut like an inch and a half off the bottom of the dress that I cut off. I chose this width completely arbitrarily just because I figured I can always make them smaller if I need to. Okay, and then I cut it so it's just one long big strand. Now I'm just setting it up like this in my machine. And I'm going to do a single stitch. And I'm making it super wide. And I'm pulling my tails out long. And I'm going to do a basting stitch all the way down. And a basting stitch just means you're not going to back stitch. Okay, now I'm at the end and I'm just gonna keep going so that I have really long thread. Okay, this is the part I'm pretty sure I'm gonna fuck up because I'm gonna pull on this top string and use it to gather all of this, but if I don't break it, it'll be a miracle. Okay, so as you can see, it's making ruffles. I'm pulling on that string and then I'm just loosening the ruffles all the way down the strand. It's gonna take forever, but it's working. Okay, it's a ruffle now, so now I'm just really roughly pinning it along the bottom of the dress to see if I need to make it a little bit less roughly for it to fit or what, but I kind of think that that might be the perfect amount of ruffle. So now, also if it had been too short, I would have just stretched the ruffles out a little bit, but this is what it looks like. So the space that I left at the top is gonna be how I attach it. Okay, so now I'm taking the end of the dress, it's inside out, and I'm folding it over at the very end. And I'm gonna start at a side seam, so I'm folding it over, and then I'm taking that raw edge of the ruffle and matching it up with this so that I'm gonna stitch right where the ruffle starts to show. So I'm gonna pin it. Okay, so I've got it all pinned now. This is what it looks like. It's not that roughly, but it's cute enough. And now I'm gonna go attach it. I don't know what stitch I'm gonna do, I'll tell you. Okay, I just realized I pinned it in kind of a silly way because I'm really just gonna sew it um, with the right sides together along this line, but I'll just unpin as I go. All right, so that's what that looks like now. So the last step is going to be to do a zigzag stitch along this so that it doesn't fray and then trim the excess fabric. Okay, and then once everything is done, this is what it looks like. I think it's way cuter. I'm way more likely to wear it like this. Um, and I think it's going to be really fun to style. 
I wanted to make a vintage sizzler for my next sewing project. Sizzlers are micro mini dresses popular in the early 70s. I found this amazing vintage apple fabric and knew it would be perfect. Here's the vintage pattern that I used. Typically, sizzler dresses were also paired with matching bikini pants. These dresses were popular with preteen and teenage girls in the early 70s because they were often not allowed to wear pants to school. Quick dog break. So I cut everything out based off the pattern. The fabric was a nylon acetate, which was hard to sew, but I ended up just pinning both sides and then it was easier. And here's our vintage sizzler. What do you think? It is the day before opening night for Into the Woods with a local theater that I am costuming, and for some reason, I decided that I absolutely hated both of the stepsisters' dresses and needed to make new ones. So a trip to the thrift store, and here we go. I started with Moods the Bridgerton dress. I've used it before and I liked it, plus it's a free download. My fashion fabric here is a very fancy tablecloth and those pattern weights are actually coasters that I bought at a recent Comic-Con. I'm not being careful with my cutting here. I'm not pattern matching. I barely even made sure it was on grain. For the lining, I used an old sheet and I definitely didn't make sure that was on grain, but who has time for that? Cue some absolutely panicked sewing, which I didn't even use needles for. For the top, I just took the fashion fabric and the lining and sandwiched it right sides together to form a bag lining. Have I mentioned that this sewing is panic sewing yet? Because the energy in this household is definitely very frantic right now. So that's where it was at right then. For the skirt, I didn't really measure. I just held it up to my body and hoped for the best. But I cut the skirt the entire width of the tablecloth and from the bottom so that these surged selvage edges could just be my finishing on my hem and on my seam. I did the same thing with my sheet lining and used the bottom so I didn't have to hem, but that I could just rip across, which went a lot faster. To gather the skirt, I did my favorite method for when you have to go really fast, which is just to do a very loose zigzag stitch over a silky cord. It doesn't make the neatest gathers in the world, but it is really nice because it goes fast. Once you're ready to sandwich things together, you can just pull it right on through and it's very easy. So that's what that looked like. Then I did the ugliest zipper I've ever done in my life, so I'm not going to show it to you. But after that, I took my pink pillowcase and cut out a general sleeve pattern. I probably could have just used the one that come with the pattern, but I didn't for some reason. I guess I forgot. Next, I used some elastic in the bottom of the sleeve to create that kind of puffy sleeved look without having to do any gathers. Then I used the scalloped edge of the pillowcase to create a belt. Here it is, but I still have one dress left to do, so part two coming soon. Okay, so I've got this button up, right? But I don't really wear button ups that often, but it's cute because it's got this little cherry print. So let's turn it into something I'll actually wear. First thing I'm gonna do is just cut the sleeves to a shorter length. This is triggering me. I feel like I look like a high school boy in a small print shirt, but that's okay. I want them even shorter than this, but I just did it to this length so that I can go and hem these at an angle. I've gone ahead and hemmed it, and then I also cropped the bottom. So now I feel like it's way cuter and way more likely to wear it with jean shorts. Um, but I've got all of this extra fabric, so I'm gonna quickly try and make another little crop top using this and the sleeves okay so i did it and this is the little crop top that i made and i think it's really adorable and it looks so cute with the other little short sleeve shirt that i made and when i wear it with like jean shorts and my cherry earrings 
I think it's gonna be really cute. Yay. I also might go add like a little cinch right here, but I haven't decided. <laughs>